everybody's assumed position, so we can go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'll start off uh, this week with the public health hero. Uh, today, I want to recognize Becky Johnson. She's the Southeast Kansas Multi-County Health Department Administrator. Uh, Becky oversees the public health operations in Allen, Anderson, Bourbon, and Woodson counties. Uh, she reports to four county commissions and works with multiple school districts. As a former school nurse herself, Becky brings a unique perspective uh, to the position, uh, which she actually used uh, to assist with two COVID-19 outbreaks in local schools. She also posts educational messages in daily case numbers uh, on social media and serves as the main contact for local newspapers and radio stations. So, Becky, if you are watching, I want to thank you for your continued commitment to your community. Now for the COVID-19 numbers review. Uh, please note that these numbers are as of yesterday at 9 a.m. Between Monday and Wednesday, Kansas reported 3,590 new COVID-19 cases and 50 new deaths. This brings us to a total of 263,412 cases, 7,930 hospitalizations, and 3,575 deaths. In recent weeks, our state has seen a slow yet steady decline in the number of new cases reported. This is positive news, but I want to remind Kansans that the current case rate is still much higher than it was at the beginning of the pandemic, and we cannot let our guard down. Actually, the Wichita Eagle reported that though there are fewer COVID-19 patients in Wichita hospitals than there were uh, a week ago, that the hospital ICUs remain critically full. So let's all work together uh, to ensure that this downward trend continues until we can get every Kansan vaccinated. That means continue wearing your mask, continue physically distancing, avoid gatherings, and get tested. On the vaccine front, today I'm pleased to announce uh, that our state is moving into phase two of the vaccine distribution plan. As we move into the second phase, I want to reiterate that these priority groups were created with input from our local and federal partners and health experts. The phases are flexible, strategic, and were crafted to protect as many Kansans as possible as quickly as possible. Phase two includes three groups, persons age 65 and older, high contact critical workers necessary to maintain systems, assets, and activities that are vital to state security, the economy, or public health, or those who interact with large numbers of contacts and a great number of job-related COVID-19 exposure. So this includes, but is not limited to, um, firefighters, police officers, first responders, and correction officers, K-12 and child care staff, including teachers, custodians, drivers, and others, food processing workers, including meat packing plants, transportation workers, and workers in retail, agriculture, supply of critical services or materials for COVID-19 response, the U.S. Postal Service, and Department of Motor Vehicles. The third group is those living or working in licensed congregate environments where social distancing is not possible. Those include homeless shelters, congregate child care institutions, emergency shelters or safe houses, corrections facilities, and behavioral health uh, institutions. Just because I named the phase two groups in that order does not mean that our local officials must vaccinate their eligible community members in that same order. Local health officials have the authority to prioritize their chosen groups within each phase. Uh, they know their communities best uh, and they will know best how to distribute these vaccines effectively among their residents. Lastly, I would like to remind everyone that the rate of vaccinations will be dependent upon the number of doses we receive from the federal government. As we enter this new phase of distribution, my administration will also enter a new era in our COVID-19 response and vaccine plan. 
I understand that Kansans still have questions about the vaccination delivery and where they fit into these priority categories. Know that we are laser focused on answering these questions, making delivery quick and efficient, and ensuring thorough communication and response systems with our local health departments, hospitals, and vaccine providers. Tomorrow, I will hold my biweekly call with local elected leaders, public health officers, and emergency response managers to make sure that there's no daylight between this administration and our local partners as we move into phase two. Additionally, the Kansas Department of Health and Environment has created a new vaccine dashboard for our state. The dashboard details the number of Kansans who have been vaccinated, the total vaccine doses that have been administered and distributed in Kansas, and the percentage of Kansans vaccinated. Like the COVID-19 case numbers, these numbers will be updated every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As of yesterday, the dashboard detailed that Kansas has recorded 202,225 doses as distributed. 129,349 of those doses have been recorded as administered. 111,632 first doses, 17,712 second doses. Total of 111,905 Kansans, or 3.8% of our population, has been reported as vaccinated. The new dashboard is available at kansasvaccine.gov along with other vaccine-related information. In the coming weeks, kansasvaccine.gov will also be home to a map-based vaccine finder tool, which is currently under development. The new tool will allow users to locate providers near them who are vaccinating the public and include guidance on whether those providers have been recently allocated vaccine doses. Uh, we will update Kansans as soon as this tool is up and running. When it comes to COVID-19 vaccine doses for this week, uh, we have received 18,525 doses from uh, Pfizer. All of those are prime or the first dose. From Moderna, we've received 17,800 prime doses and 17,000 boosters. That's the second shot. I want to end today's update with an announcement. Last fall, I chose Dr. Marcy Nielsen former Vice President for Policy and Strategy at GIA Health, to serve as Special Advisor to the Governor to lead our efforts to ramp up our unified testing strategy. Her efforts, along with our team at the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, helped our state nearly double the number of tests we performed and bring our overall increase in testing to the top tier nationwide. I'm glad to announce uh, that Dr. Nielsen will stay on my team as Chief Advisor for COVID-19 Coordination to streamline our vaccine distribution efforts. Uh, Dr. Nielsen will work with federal, state, and local partners to ensure Kansas's vaccine distribution practices are second to none. And with that, uh, Secretary Norman and I will take questions. Just clarifying on her role, she can work out of the governor's office or work she is, uh, she's a special advisor to the governor, so she's part of the governor's office, uh, but obviously will be working very closely uh, with KDHE, uh, KDEM, and other agencies that are involved in vaccine distribution. Governor, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is about Subject County Elections Commissioner Catherine Lehman. Um, her term will be ending in July as requested by the Secretary of State's office after Lehman, who um, is battling cancer, decided to work from home this last election. Has she received no outside guidance or accommodations from the Secretary's office on how to move forward given her condition? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I believe that that's really a personnel issue and one to be dealt with in the Secretary of State's office. And then the second question is, uh, were you able to check in with the Department of Labor on labor issues? Uh, we heard from a gentleman today who says he's been trying to get help for an entire year. Uh, what, should help, uh, what should people do if they need labor assistance and can't get through? You know, what they really ought to do is call their legislator, uh, and their legislator can act as their advocate uh, to, to get them through. Uh, I will tell you that uh, I think we're up and ready to go uh, with the $300 uh, extra uh, money from the Department, uh, the Federal Department of Labor. I think those checks will start going out as early as tomorrow. I'm not sure this is better for you or for Dr. Norman, but. Uh, this 
seems like the counties are taking the lead on phase two uh, and getting the ball rolling. What does that mean though for like uh, state correctional facilities? Is KDHE going to be handling that? Is KDOT or the counties going to be involved somehow? Health kind of departments? Uh, what is that? Yeah, let me go ahead and let uh, Dr. Norman answer that question. Yes, good question about the operational aspects of taking care of the correctional facility uh, uh, residents, offenders, if you will, um, will be a joint effort by us and the counties. We always uh, keep the counties in the loop. Uh, the distribution of the product, of course, will be visible to the counties as well. and. Um, uh, we're comfortable. We've been doing that all along. This is not new to us. We've been working with the correctional facilities, both uh, Department of Corrections and also county jails uh, throughout the state. We've been working all along with them, and they will continue to be involved with it as well. Dr. Norman, as people who are in the CDC or KDHE's phase two plan and are being offered the vaccine in their home county, if they can, can they go to another county to get the shot? For example, uh, if they live in Sedgwick County, could they drive to another county that is vaccinating teachers or grocery workers to get a vaccine? Yes, they can, uh, a resident can go into any county and get vaccinated. And following up on the yeah. correctional facilities, is there a time frame when that's expected to start? I mean, I know obviously it happens to start now, but yeah, as, planning. Yeah, person. sure, the timing. As the governor mentioned, um, the, uh, every county is different, and the impact that the correctional facility in a particular county has had has not been the same across uh, counties. And the counties will have input as to how early or how late in the phase they choose to uh, recommend the vaccination start. Could both of you comment on the uh, President Biden's intention to surge vaccine production and, uh, and implementation around the country? How important is that? Yeah, I'll take a whack at it first, Governor. Um, well, first off, our problem that we have in Kansas primarily is, is supply. And the distribution coming from the federal government has pretty much kept up with what they have, but we just do not have enough. And I think it's really important to dispel the notion that we are sequestering away or warehousing and keeping at the state level vaccine. We are not. We're pushing out all the vaccine we get. This seems yep. to be more federal White House urgency on all of this. Yeah, and my response to um, this administration's uh, intent to really ramp up uh, vaccination uh, development and distribution. Um, in fact, I think uh, they just invoked the Defense Production Act this morning. Uh, I think, uh, sounds hallelujah, we have needed this for a long time. You know, the a response to this kind of emergency really does need to be driven uh, from, from the federal government down to the state governments and then are working with the local governments like any other uh, emergency uh, of this magnitude. So I'm, I'm thrilled and I look forward to it because as we go into phase two, the, the number of Kansans who are now eligible uh, for vaccines has just skyrocketed and we need uh, a like number of, of uh, vaccines coming into the state so that we can take care of everybody. So in other states, you know, under phase two before Kansas, uh, some might say that- I didn't, I didn't understand oh, you. Sorry, other states under phase two before Kansas, uh, some may say that we're behind. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think uh, you're talking in, in some cases a matter of days. Uh, you're also talking that not every state uh, phases are the same. They don't include the same people. So I think, you know, it's, it's difficult to compare apples to oranges, but I'm very confident uh, that Kansas has moved into phase two at an appropriate time, you know, where we have been able to give uh, the, the local, the providers time to get vaccinated, the folks who were the highest priority. You know, they've done a great job uh, doing that, and now it's time, and, and we're just going to move as science dictates and as circumstances dictate. You know, I know the groups um, within phase two are the 65 and older prioritized first or is it a free for all of who can get vaccine phase two? Uh, I think we, we've got, I think the three different groupings uh, and that will be up to the local public health departments to determine where they want to open up uh, those eligibilities first. Um, uh, former Governor Sebelius, that the Kansas congressman who voted to reject the uh, 
electoral votes um, should rely on their wife be held accountable? Uh, you know, I, I believe that uh, former Governor Sebelius, former Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, you know, was expressing uh, her heartfelt opinion about that, and I will leave it at that. I have not expressed uh, an opinion about that, and I don't intend to. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much.